Hi friends, Shayla here. So I am here to talk to you about my five favorite Jose of 2020. So as you guys have been seeing, I've been going through all of the core demographics in manga and giving you guys kind of my top five from the year. And I haven't necessarily, like they didn't all necessarily come out in 2020, but I read them in 2020. I believe all of the ones on my list for this did come out this year. So I am genuinely excited to continue with these lists. I've had a really fun time compiling all the lists and I cannot wait for you guys to pick up and enjoy some of my favorites. So let's dive in. These aren't in any particular order. I love them all equally. You just have to know that before I start. So an incurable case of love. I really wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this, but I ended up really loving and enjoying it. In this one, we're following Nanase. And Nanase had an experience with a young doctor early on in years, um, she saw an elderly woman like fall and have kind of an accident. I'm not sure if it was her grandmother or just someone on the street, I can't remember exactly. But this young doctor stops and helps, his name is Dr. Tendo. And so from that moment, she decides she wants to be a nurse at this particular hospital so that she can be closer to Dr. Tendo. Well, when she meets Dr. Tendo, she finds out he's a grumpy curmudgeon man and doesn't remember her at all. <laughs> So this is about Nanase's journey in getting to know who Dr. Tendo actually is and Dr. Tendo getting to know her and their work relationship together, as well as their budding romantic relationship as the series goes on. This one is currently five volumes deep. I absolutely love and adore it. Again, I really love the art style. It's fantastic and I can't get enough of this series. I always look forward to the volumes when they're coming out. And this is just one that makes me happy when I read it. I believe all of these series just make me happy when I read them except one. So highly enjoy this. Next up, we have Fire in His Fingertips. A flirty fireman ravishes me with his smoldering gaze. So this is basically geared as hentai for women. So in this one, we're following Rio. Rio has this friend named Soma and she has continued, Rio, Soma, by the way, and she's continued to set him up with like, you know, mixer dates and all those kinds of things because he didn't seem to want to settle down with anybody, but he always seemed to kind of hover around Rio. Anyways, there's a fire at her apartment building. She takes his advice. She starts making a lot of noise so that people know she's alive. And then all of a sudden she stops. He comes stumbling into the room. He's like, oh my gosh, you're here, you're okay. I've got you. And he rescues her. And then from there, she doesn't have anywhere to stay. He's like, well, you can come stay at my place. And things go from there. It's steamy as all get out. I've read the two volumes that are out in this. I love and adore it. It is so good. Oh, and this is, I, I can't even really show you panels outside of the very beginning here. Um, like this is when he rescues her. But it is so filthy smutty. If you're looking for a dirty, dirty smutty manga series, you have to try fire in his fingertips. And this is just so much fun. Um, their relationship is actually really cute, mixed up in all the smutty things and the smutty adventures. But that's just how I live my life. I want a sweet romance, but down, dirty, and filthy times. So one thing I will caveat with this is it does have the Japanese cultural trope of, um, I would say it's like, it's kind of non-con, but not really because she doesn't really do anything to stop him except saying no. But in Japanese culture, that's something that women aren't supposed to want and enjoy sex. So culturally, of course, she's going to say no when he is like arousing her. So you have to know that going into this series. And it even talks about it in the second volume a little more. He's like, you really can't admit you want this, huh? And she's like, it's embarrassing. So you can tell she's not... She's not trying to force him away or anything like that. So I do caveat this series with that little tidbit so that if it's not your thing, not your trope, you can just go ahead and pass. But I want you to know that culturally, this isn't rape. Don't call it rape because it's definitely not. So anyways, there's that. All right, up next is Night of the Ice. This is one of the most adorable manga series I've read all year. So in this, we're following Chitose. Chitose is this cute girl on the back. Her best friend is Kokoro. I always want to forget his name. So Kokoro, this guy here, is a professional figure skater, but he has a problem. He cannot land his quad jumps unless Chitose comes and casts 
a spell on him from his favorite magical girl anime. When she does that, he has the confidence to land his jumps and do great. But that does upset kind of her work life. And so this is a really interesting romance between the two of them and figuring out what they truly mean to each other. It's the sweetest thing. I love it so much. Kokoro is so pure. I really love Chitose. They are just the cutest and I just love them. So please check out Night of the Ice if you haven't because it is definitely worth your time. Next up is kind of a darker romance and I'm gonna caveat that it's a dark so that you aren't surprised if you try it out and that is Something's Wrong With Us. So in this one we have Now. And now, as a child, her mother was accused of murder and sent to jail. And so Nao's life was completely upended. And it was her childhood best friend named Tsubaki that is the one that accuses her mother of murder. And so from there, it's about now kind of coming back to Tsubaki's household, trying to make her way in and to get her revenge by cooking Japanese sweets, because that's what her mother did. And so this is a very toxic dynamic. So it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. Um, Tsubaki has inclinations as to who now really is. And he, he isn't 100% sure, so he hasn't called her on it, but their dynamic is really toxic. It ends up in kind of a fake engagement kind of situation, but I absolutely love this. The art is amazing. And I've just really had a great time with this series so far. I believe there's three volumes. I've read three volumes of this so far, and I think the fourth one's coming out soon. But anyways, definitely worth it. If you like a darker romance, this is definitely a good fit. And last but not least is one of my favorite slice of life manga out there, and that is My Androgynous Boyfriend. And in this, we're following Megaru, who is this gorgeous human here. Megaru gives off all of the Park Jimin vibes if you're a BTS person, and we love him for it. Anyways, Megaru is in love with a woman named Wako. They've been dating since high school, and Megaru is definitely androgynous. He's very gorgeous. He's a model, he works at a clothing store, and this is just about their day-to-day -day life together. Wako is his biggest fan, and she loves to make him all cute, to take all the cute pictures for him. It is just the purest thing ever. And I'm showing you my favorite panel. Like he talks about how he's gonna cut the carrots into hearts for the hot pot that night, just because he loves Wako so much. I love these two. They are so adorable. They are two of my favorite manga humans. And it's just the best. This is just very slow moving, not a lot of plot, slice of life. It's just their, their life together. And it's beautiful and I love it. And it does have discussions about sexuality, androgyny, all those kinds of things going on in it as well, but it's not super heavy handed. So just know the discussions are there, but they're done in a healthy, safe, not pushy kind of way. So friends, those are my favorite Jose's from 2020. If one of your favorites wasn't in this list, definitely go and check out last year's video because it might be hanging out there. And I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.